Baseball season is underway, and even if the start isn't stellar, Cardinal fans are backing their Redbirds. And in just a few days, players and fans from across the league will celebrate Jackie Robinson and the baseball color barrier he broke almost 70 years ago. But what's going on in baseball today? Taking a game at Bush, and you won't see a single black player wearing the birds on the bat. Is our so-called national pastime still a game for everyone? Has baseball become exclusive or just lost touch with younger athletes and fans? Does it even matter? Stay tuned. Stay tuned brings together local experts, journalists, civic leaders, and regular people to have tough conversations for a stronger St. Louis. Add your voice to our conversation and you're at the table as we stay on top of current events and go deeper, bringing more light and less heat to the issues that matter. From the Nine Network of Public Media in Grand Center, this is Stay Tuned. It's a game grounded in tradition. And in St. Louis, baseball is much more than a game. For at least 81 home dates, it seems like the social center of the city. But is it a game for all? In a city where roughly half the population is African American, scan the stands and nearly all those in red are of the same color. And while the lineup can look diverse, there isn't a single African American player on the Cardinals roster. League-wide African American players make up only 8% of teams compared to nearly 20% in the 1970s and 80s. 69 years after Jackie Robinson stepped onto Ebbets Field and broke decades of segregation and ushered in a new era for baseball, has the game taken a step back? And the footage you just saw there at the end is from a new Ken Burns documentary that I have a feeling is going to have us talking even more in the baseball conversation about Jackie Robinson than normally this time of year. That premieres on Monday night here on 9 PBS at 8 p.m. Monday and Tuesday. We're going to have a little sneak peek of it uh, later in the show as well. I'm also excited about a panel discussion we have coming up in studio here that includes my colleague from KSCK, Rennie Knott. But first, let's go back uh, and, and take a look back at Cardinal history just a little bit with Brian Finch, kind of the de facto historian for the Cardinals, not your, your official title, uh, manager of stadium tours and muse museum outreach. We appreciate your knowledge about Cardinal history, Phil. Uh, can you clarify, give us, give us the Cardinals' uh, role in the Jackie Robinson story. The, it, it, can you clarify it maybe? Well, it's pretty interesting with, with, you know, some people say the Cardinals don't necessarily have a role and depending upon which side of history you want to be on, they, they say it's a negative you know, stance or a positive stance. But the Cardinals are somewhat unique in that Branch Rickey, the man that is responsible for signing Jackie Robinson as the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, really got his start as the front office man you know, with the Cardinals. So he had a lot to do with you know, changing how the business of baseball worked as the vice president of the St. Louis Cardinals. He really came on board in that position had named himself as the field manager of the Cardinals as a cost-cutting move in 1919. Um, he also thought he was smarter than most people. Um, he really was smarter than his ball players too. He isolated himself. Uh, you know, most of those ball players in the uh, late 19 teens, you know, in the early 20s, they weren't educated players. And he was doing chalk talks in the locker room, and it was just above their heads. He also was instituting training methods, though, that was changing the game. And he recognized behind the scenes that the business of baseball needed to be changed and created this concept of the affiliated minor league system, which we now know as, you know, the farm system. So that really changed how the business worked. Uh, but Branch also had this, uh, this kind of this purity about him. And even from his college days on, uh, he didn't really discriminate against ball players, but he did operate in the system that the owners would not allow, you know, it wasn't really, you know, black to white, it was white to non-white players. So it wasn't just African-American players, it was any player that had, you know, darker skin, they were not allowed to play the game of Major League how Baseball. Did the, how did the Cardinals, uh, the t players, respond when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier? Well, it depends on who you ask, but I think the history books show that most players, you know, he wasn't well received throughout the league. And of course, at the time when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947, the facts are that St. Louis was still the southernmost and westernmost major league baseball team and of course city. And we know that St. Louis had the largest African American population of any major league city at the time. Um, we also know that Sportsman's Park 
uh, whether right or wrong at the time, was the last baseball stadium in that era to desegregate. So uh, those are the things that are a little bit uncomfortable to talk about. However, when Gussie Bush bought the team with Anheuser-Busch in 1953, he was really on it to, to really break this barrier in St. Louis. And so while we talk about those things being negatives, uh, the Cardinals were right in the middle of all major league teams to desegregate their roster, really integrate their roster. Tom Austin was our first African-American player who broke that color barrier for the Cardinals. 1953? 1954, so April 13th, 1954. And Bush really went to great lengths to, uh, to get him on the roster. He gave up two players and $100,000 to sign him from San Diego, which was a high-level minor league club in the Pacific Coast League. And then Jackie Robinson wasn't alone in some of the things he faced. We also sat down earlier this week uh, with Ted Savage, former Cardinal player, and, and we, he shared some of his experience as a baseball player. I always wanted to be like Jackie. I could run a little bit. I could steal bases. I, at that time, I thought I could do it all. And uh, I guess I did well enough to make, it to make it to the major leagues and still wanted to be like Jackie because of what he went through. I had the opportunity or the chance, and I did go through some of the same things that he went through. One day, I'm on the own deck circle. I'm getting ready to hit. The bad boy comes to me and says, Savage, you got to read this note. I said, read what note? I said, I can't be reading no note from no girl. He said, it ain't from no girl. It ain't from your wife. I said, give it to me right quick. I got the note, I looked at it, and the note says, the N-word, if you think about hitting tonight, look down the left field line. If that ain't good enough for you, look down the right field line. Then I look down the left field line, and I see this burning sand down there with cross. I see the white robes. Damn. I look down the right field line, I see the same thing. And they say, if you think, and once, once again, I let the notice, if you think about hitting, think again. So I got up and walked back to the manager, Skip. I said, he said, Savage, where you going? I said, uh, did you read the note? He said, uh, I read it. He said, you read it too, didn't you? He said, he said, I said, yeah, I read it. He said, where are you going? He said, I said, I'm not going to hit tonight. I'm through. And, and, and what I'm thinking at the same time is that something is going to happen. They're going to try to hang me or shoot me or something. And at the same time, some of the ball players are already moving away from me because they think they might shoot in the dugout. And I just went on in the dugout. They called the police. And they escorted me back to the hotel, got my stuff, escorted me to the airplane on the runway and sent me back to my home team. I was glad to get out. I was scared. There were a lot of games, a lot of times I was just flat out scared. And then to go out there and listen to one of the managers who might say, well, you're not, you're not giving us your all. You're not doing your best. And here I am, and somebody that sent me a note or wrote me a letter saying they're going to kill me if I play and all this kind of stuff. You know, here I am trying to hit and look over my shoulder and see if anybody's pointing something at me or they're going to come to the ballpark. And, uh, and I guess everybody, a lot of people say, why didn't you quit? Because I didn't want to quit. I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to be like Jackie Robinson. I wanted to help break the color barrier. But at the same time, I was scared as hell. Scared to death. It's an amazing story he tells there. As you understand it, that was uh, an experience in the minor leagues. That's my interpretation, yes. So Ted played in the 1960s. 
what give us the landscape of the 1960s as it pertained to St. Louis Cardinal baseball and integration. Well, what's really interesting in terms of Mr. Bush's ownership of the Cardinals is that you know, we got a little bit of a late jump with the integration efforts that, of course, Jackie Robinson, you know, propelled the major leagues forward with. But um, what's exciting now for Cardinals fans is how many great players, you know, when you think of the diversity movement that we really embraced, particularly by the 60s. Diversity was a critical component of the success of the Cardinals. And you think about Bob Gibson coming up, uh, acquiring Bill White, Kurt Flood, you know, the, the trade for Lou Brock. And that opened the door to Latin American players. They had been shut out, too. Uh, again, it wasn't just a, an ethnicity issue. It was a skin color. And that makes it even more tragic when you think about it. And so then you welcome players Orlando Cepeda, Julian Javier, uh, Ed Oliveras, Ruben Gote. So you think about those championship years in 64, 67, 68, going back to the World Series and losing. And how many fans do we have now still in St. Louis that think back to those teams and how great those years were and it's all because this city and this team and, and that ownership group um, really championed that style of baseball. And it's because of the leadership in the clubhouse and in the locker room that these players brought to the field. Before we talk about the day, first I'll say thanks, Brian. Uh, Fitch, I appreciate your time, Brian. Thanks for being here.